I think contend with four true name nemesis. Um, but obviously Thomas is very familiar with his deck. So this guy's tall. Are you kidding? Yeah, he looks pretty short. He we did a good job today. framing it. Yeah, they both look the same height here. Uh, seven feet tall. Used to play basketball for the Michigan State Spartans. Um, I mean, really likes to play Magic. That's for sure. I know when I sat down and we, we chatted before he played our match, um, you know, he was in a Michigan State warm-up, and I was like, you know, I'm the predictable idiot who's just, did you, did you play basketball? He's just like, yeah, I did. <laughs> and everyone asked me that. And I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to carry on this conversation anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to have the, hey, you're tall, you play basketball conversation. Well, I'm 6'5", so every once in a while people ask me, oh, did you used to play basketball? And I'll tell them no. And they always have the same disappointed look on their face. But I'm like, yeah, like, you have to be athletic, too. Like, you can't just be tall. <laughs> you have to have some coordination. But I thought you were a salsa dance champion. Well, the, the, the skills from salsa dancing don't really translate uh, well to the basketball Understood, court. understood. Death Right Shaman off a tropical island is where we'll begin here for Dustin Penn. You've got Herzog going to lead off with a Savannah into a Mother of Runes. Penn takes a look at his hand, maybe considering a Force of Will there, decides to let that go. As far as this Maverick deck list is concerned, he is just green-white, does have access to Death Right Shaman for a little bit of color fixing. Uh, Mother of Runes, just one noble hierarch. A lot of Thalia's there for those. Couple copies of Kasali, Pride, Mage, and Stone, Forge, Mystic. And of course, for Knight of the Reliquary, as Dustin Penn will sacrifice a another Windswept Heath. Going to search out a land and see if he has one of these powerful three drops to play. Yeah, this is kind of the ideal star for Dustin. He's got his one mana accelerant, and it looks like he does have a true name nemesis. He also has a Geist of St. Shraft, too, if he wants to try to deploy that. Um, given that there's a Mother of Runes in play, probably going to lead with the, with the true name nemesis. It's just more powerful. Um, he also has a stone forge in his hand, so really just the ideal start here. It's a pretty good hand. Against Maverick. It's a pretty good hand, pretty good start. He also has a force of will, and again, he has that Geist, so he could force a will. Um, something from Thomas. Given that he has a stone forge in his hand, I think if you're Dustin, the only thing that you're really afraid of is uh, maybe an opposing stone forge, but realistically, it's probably just like a Phyrexian Revoker because you just don't want to get your um, stone forge or the equipment that you search out for um, countered. Uh, stop with the Revoker. Source of Plot shares in the house, going to take down Deathrite Shaman. You see Dustin really considering every spell that Herzog plays, if he wants to force a will it or not. Herzog is now going to sacrifice a Virgin Catacombs, go down to 19. Going to search up a Bayou. Let's we'll see what he wants to follow up with here. Yeah, given, given that you, hand, you have that Stoneforge in your hand, I think the only thing you really care about is just anything that can somehow deal with your true nemesis, which there isn't much, and then something that can stop your equipment. There's Deathrite Shaman. So Penn will untap with a true name. He will take a draw. You see the Dried Arbor in his hand. A couple of other options there as well. And you, keep, you do continuously mention the Force of Will along with Geist of St. Traff, which is arguably the most important cards in the grip there for Penn. Be able to protect himself from something bad. Going to start by attacking for three Herzog down to 16. Yeah, Stoneforge is, is really important in this deck, too, because True Name Nemesis on its own um, doesn't necessarily win games all the time. It's really the combination of True Name plus equipment, mm -hmm. which is so devastating against certain decks. Um, obviously, Thomas has the ability to to race a true name on its own. He's got stone forges uh, along with batter skull. So uh, now Dustin's going to be able to search out Umazao Jite. And if that ever equips onto the true name nemesis, uh, it's going to be very difficult for Thomas to overcome that. Yeah, we're in an equipment heavy matchup here. Only, even though Herzog only has two copies of stone forge mystic, he has a sword of light and shadow, a sword of fire and ice, and an Umazao Jite all in his main deck. You saw a pen search up the Umazao Jite. I'm going to assume he has a batter skull as well. Yeah, he also has a sword of fire and ice. So oh, okay. um, most of these stone forge decks, you'll just see them with a Jite and a batter skull. Both of these decks obviously have um, that extra piece of equipment. Yeah, branching out a little bit. If there's like, we'll take a draw here. You see, he does have the sword of, well, most swords. I believe it's a light and shadow in his hand right now. The modern master's edition. I was going to say feast and famine, uh, but that is not in his main deck. Yeah, so Dustin has to be a little concerned here because obviously a sword of feast, uh, any any sword of uh, that can get equipped with the combination of mother runes um, could potentially erase a true name nemesis. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for him to get that jete to stick. He so does Herzog have a force gonna, of will. Herzog's going to sacrifice this uh, this misty rainforest. Going to search out a scrub land. Mana is good to go. Let's see what spell he wants to cast. It's going to be four mana. Remove that windswept teeth. Maybe a zenith for three. Yep. Yes. Going to try to go get knight. Uh, the reliquary can get pretty big. Yeah, this is this is not too surprising. You can't let the knight resolve. 
Even if it is Zenith getting Knight, you just get Knight's the centerpiece of this deck. All right, so Dustin expended most of his resources now. Um, he does have that Jitte in his hand, and it looks like he might have... Not sure what the other card is, but again... Geist. Oh, Geist, yes. So he has a... Uh, he still has that Jitte, so if he has a fourth land here, he can actually play the Jitte and equip, but it doesn't look like he has a fourth mana. A little surprised to see Dustin remove the Brainstorm to the Force Wheel, assuming that he does have a Geist in his hand, because it looks like the plan right now is, you know, the combo of Trinity Nemesis plus an equipment. So we, yeah, we, you, we may have misread his hand. I'm not too sure, but I was pretty sure there was a Geist hiding out over there. Yeah, I think he, yeah, he definitely has a Geist in his hand, and it looks like he drew a stone cord. So mm -hmm. I'm with you. I would have rather, knowing that you're likely going to put a, 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 the equipment into play this turn, I'd rather just maximize my mana. You can actually brainstorm and put the equipment into play, do two things. And uh, this turn, he's basically not going to be able to cast the Geist either, yep. unless he just wants to miss um, equipping Jete next turn. Jete plus true name is just too good. I can't imagine wanting to play a Geist here. Penn will just pass the turn back with the Stoneforge Mystic activation at the ready. Herzog's going to untap. He will take a draw. See if he can find anything helpful in this situation. One of the things that has actually kept Maverick down recently is the printing of True Nemesis. It's a very hard card for them to beat. Yeah, after Cyborg, obviously, they have more options. But game one is very difficult for them. Um, they can try to race it. But yeah, again, Stone for, uh, True Name Nemesis plus equipment is just very, very difficult for them to deal with. He does have that sort of light and shadow. He could actually cast it and equip it to the mother if he wants to, to try to get some life. Um, looks like he's going to play a Thalia. That won't in, that won't stop Justin's Dustin's plan because you just put in the stone the Mazawa Jete to play off the stone for Mystic. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a Deathrite Shaman activation. Going to remove a land from the graveyard. Two. There's a Kasali Pride. Wow, Mage. that's so important. Great card there. Um, Kozali Prime will be able to deal with the Umazawa Jete. Mm -hmm. Dustin does have another Stoneforge in his hand, so he can search out another piece of equipment, but that's definitely going to slow Dustin down a lot. Yeah, the Jete plan is kind of up now, so Mother Runes is still hanging back on defense, of course. That thing's not going to go anywhere. Herzog needs to just start creating an offense. That's the issue right now. Yeah, he does. I believe the last card in his hand is a Sword of Light and Shadow. So yep. if he can get that into play, that's great, because not only will it give him uh, a boost in offense, but he could also return that Kozali Pride Mage yeah. to his hand. So yep. suddenly, things are looking pretty good for Thomas because he has that uh, Kozali Pride Mage. Jute in off the Stone Forge. Pen will untap his permanence. We'll take a draw. Again, we know about the other Stone Forge and the Geist of St. Trapped in his hand. Not sure what the mystery card drawn was this turn. But the equipment strategy going to get taken care of by this Kozali Pride Mage timely. And here comes True Name because there's no sense in equipping that sheet, eh? So in we go. And Herzog will take the three. He's going to go down to nine. Yeah, and he has to be a little concerned about his life total here because, if, especially if Dustin plays the Geist here, he's just um, going to go with the Stoneforge. Yeah, he's going to go for Stoneforge. Probably, I mean, search up Batterskull. Go ahead and grab that. Again, the equipment aren't very good right now, but. Well, he's at 18. Yeah. And yeah. he doesn't know about the Sword of Light and Shadow. That's so also true. He assumes that Thomas only has one, one way to deal with an equipment right now, because yeah. Pride Mage. Obviously, he's going to have to alter his plan if Thomas does go for Sword next turn. Um, but right now, I think Dustin's still okay with the way things are going. The follow up with the Death Rite Shaman. Yeah, so Dustin could actually equip the Umazawa Jete next turn. So, he's going to draw a card for the turn. And uh, let's see what he decides to do here. Thalia prevents all non-creature spells. Yeah. Uh, cost, makes all non-creature spells cost one more. So, the sword will cost four mana. So, if he doesn't have another land to play, uh, he won't be able to equip it now. But, yeah, it looks like he does have another mana. So let's see here. Yeah, I, with, if the last card is a Sword of Light and Shadow, which I believe it is, yes. He, I, I think his best play here is to probably just cast it, equip Thalia, and attack. Because it gives the creature protection from black and white, Dustin won't be able to block with any of his creatures. But um, is that okay? Like, because... Oh, you know what? The, he's stuck on mana. He won't be able to activate the Pride Mage then. I think the, the I think the main problem here is that he didn't activate the Pride Mage at the end of Dustin's turn. Yeah. He needed to get rid of the Jete. Now he's kind of in a tough spot where he can't really do it now. So like I'm perfectly fine with him just playing Sword, 
and passing. Yeah. And then having the Pride Mage available, um, because you know if he doesn't, if he tries to do it in one turn, the Death Rite Shaman on Dustin's side starting next turn can mess things up mm -hmm. because of Thomas's Death Rite Shaman and that little game of chicken they have to play. But I'm perfectly fine if he just you know sacrifices the fetch land, taps four mana, plays a sword, passes the turn back with the ability to sacrifice his Pride Mage to take care of the Jite, and then the next turn equipping something. And just like being a little bit more mana efficient that way. Yeah, I, I think Thomas basically just made a slight mistake. He needed to sack the Quasali Prime Mage at the end of Dustin's turn to deal with the Jete. And now, if you cast the, uh, the equipment, equip, attack, you can get your Prime Mage back before the Death Rite even becomes active. Yeah. Unfortunately, now he is only going to be able to get that one activation off of it. I'm also trying to figure out if there's any merit here to just equipping. If you equip the, the Pride Mage, it won't die. And that's not the worst spot to be in. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I'm. St this is a very. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I agree with this line right here. Um, it's ag it's aggressive. It's very aggressive. Uh, but I don't think you can deal, because basically Dustin's just going to equip his. Uh, he's going to equip his uh, Umazawa Jete to the True Name Nemesis, mm -hmm. and then he'll just kill the Pride Mage, and then he just activates Death Rite Shaman to get rid of the Pride Mage. Yeah. Yep. So the, all of a sudden, now you're just dealing with Trine and Nemesis plus shit tape. Yeah. Obviously, you can try to race that with Sword, but I don't think you win that race. That's going to be a tough race to win. This is the path that Herzog has taken. Maybe he's feeling that that three life that he can gain right away might be able to help him win this race. We're going to see as Thaia does come across here for four points of damage plus the trigger. Returns him from the graveyard. Nothing down there. Only lands in the green sun zenith. Yeah, because let's not forget, when, when Dustin removes the Quasali Prime Mage from the graveyard, he is going to gain two more life, too. Mm -hmm. So right now he's taking four. He'll go to 14. Um, Thomas will gain three life. He can bring a creature from his graveyard, but he doesn't have one. Um, Sword, of Fire, Sword of Light and Shadow is a card that you guys probably haven't seen a lot of. Um, Sword of Fire and Ice is obviously one of the more popular swords, but Sword of Light and Shadow is obviously very good, too. Um, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you gain three life, and you return up to one target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Thomas obviously doesn't have any creatures in his graveyard, but the whole idea was if he sacrificed a Pride Mage last turn, he'd be able to get it back. He, he would have dealt with the Jete and been able to get it back this turn before Dustin's Pride uh, Death Rite Shaman would have been active. Yeah, I have an answer to the Batter Skull, too. Yeah, so what, what turned out to what could have been a really dominant situation for Thomas um, becomes somewhat precarious now because now he taps out. He's no longer able to actually activate his Pride Mage because he has no more mana left. And that means that not only will it die likely to Numazao Jete, but it could get removed by the Death by Champ as well. As you can tell, play has stopped here. Um, there is a judge call taking place, and I would uh, I would make a hefty wager that this involves Exalted from the Kosali Pride Mage. And if it's an attack for four, it's an attack for five. So we're going to bring it back to the booth here. Once we do have an answer to what exactly is going, we'll certainly let you guys know. Cedric Phillips, Osip Lomadovic, back here in the booth in Indianapolis. Um, it looks like it's going to be a difficult game for Herzog to win now because of maybe yeah. that slight misstep that you and, mentioned. And it's funny because we, we thought, oh, wow, he drew Pride Mage. Now he has an answer to the Jete. And even though he, uh, the, uh, the, you, Thomas can get the uh, uh, Batter Skull, mm -hmm. it's still going to slow him down. Plus, because of the Sword and Fire, a Sword of Light and Shadow, you can actually get back that Pride yep. Mage. Um, Thomas changed things up by playing the Death Rite Shaman. As soon as he plays Death Rite Shaman, not a, you have to realize, one, my whole Light and Shadow plan becomes very precarious if I don't deal with it now. Yep. And two, like, I can't, because of Thalia, I don't have enough mana to do everything to actually activate the Pride Mage when I need to. Yep. So he had to really, I, maybe he just forgot about Thalia. Maybe he thought he could actually activate it on his turn. Um, but yeah, clearly he kind of missed an opportunity there because right now I'm not quite, if, as long as Thomas does things the way he should, basically, on his turn, equip my true name nemesis with Imujao Jete, attack, you take three, Jete gets two counters, I'll kill your Pride Mage while you're tapped out, and then I'll activate my Death Rite Shaman. Again, while you're bit. tapped out, you can't do anything to remove your Quasali yep. Pride Mage. I don't see, you, you still have a creature equipped with Sword, but now you're dealing true name nemesis and Jete, and you're at a much lower life total than your opponent. So 
I, I, I just, it's going to be tough for Dustin to come out of this, uh, for uh, Thomas to come out of this one. I'm just not sure he can. As far as redraws are concerned, there are two more Kasali Pride Mage, and that means that there are also three more Green Suns in this as well. Yeah, so he definitely has draws. He has no cards left in his hand, though. Yeah. So he's going to have to top deck either another Pride Mage or, or, or a Green Sun Zenith. Maybe an equipment um, would help, too. You know, like a Jute of yeah. his own or sort of Fire Dice, maybe? The, the, yeah, it, it would certainly help with the race. Um, and again, he still has a death right shaman to kind of gain life that way. Potentially, if creatures are bouncing, if creatures are dying. Um, but basically, the game went from being very, very winnable to very precarious now for yeah. Thomas. It's going to be a tough situation for him. Yeah. So we will again join that match in progress when we do have a second. Again, I'm just resolving a judge rule. It probably has to do with the Exalted Trigger and Kasai Pride Majors. Uh, you know, when do you announce the Exalted Trigger? Do you have to announce the Exalted Trigger? You can attack and then say take five, and then the opponent can say you didn't announce the Exalted Trigger. Um, you know, so exactly how that works is probably what they're discussing. If it's something else, we'll certainly let you guys know. Um, but while we do wait for that, um, we can go back to the... Some questions? We can go back to the phone. Do we have more questions? We can go back to the phone. Do I have more questions? Was that a joke? All right. All I have is questions, Osa. I saw one question that I got? think you kind of glossed over, oh, and it was, me. who's the better dresser? And, you know... I don't answer questions. It's an obvious answer. kind to. of feel like, you know... Your best friend, Phil Napoli, said that I dress better than you. What does Phil know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I actually think... Uh, I, so, here's the thing. Your tie wins... I think. Thank you. Just that's that's all that it is. I think you do better. I can be I can be humble. It's fine. I can be humble. Um, people are wondering how tall Thomas is. He's seven foot tall. What are you doing? I'm just. <laughs> what are, what are I you, forgot that we're on camera what are right you now. Doing? Thomas is seven feet tall. You're, you're the only person I've ever met, by the way, ever. I thought this was a movie thing that people open up their coat and they put their phone in it. Yeah. I didn't think people actually did that in real life. What are you, nuts? That's the best part of wearing a sports coat. You no. have to put stuff in your pocket. I did not know that people actually do that. You do that like it's just every yeah. day. You know why? I'll give you a little hint. It's because you don't want your pants to look bulky, so you don't want to put stuff in your pants. Mm, I Come see. on. What is this? I'm learning right now. This is amateur hour? This is, this is you know, Men's Warehouse 101 right now. That's what's going on. Okay. I've, I've never done that before. I think it would be uncomfortable to have that thing in there. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's see. Let's see. Can we please put high tide on camera? No, absolutely not. <laughs> under, hey, if they win, if they make the finals, then you'll see them. <laughs> under under no circumstance. Well, don't get me wrong. High Tide is one of those decks where there, there are certain pilots. We've seen them. They play, they play High Tide all the time. Yeah. Watching someone who really knows what they're doing with High Tide, it's actually a thing of beauty sometimes. I, I mean, agree. It's, it's a very, very interesting deck to kind of navigate. One of the more interesting combo decks. You don't see them very often. Um, it can be somewhat tiresome to watch. But, you know, it, it is, there are so many decisions to make. And the people who play that deck, they're not someone who just picks up high tide. They know what they're doing with the deck. Sure. So it's like a well-oiled machine with them. It takes time to win. That's what usually takes so long. But they know what they're doing. They're, it, it, so they're going through all the process. And it's, it's very interesting to watch. I'm not sure I'd want to watch it for, like, an hour and a half, which is, like, sometimes can happen. But I was thinking about Dallas uh, when Matthias and I did the show uh, back there a couple, a couple months ago. Joe Lissette lost in the finals. Uh, but he beat Colin Chilbert in the top four. We watched Chilbert a couple times that day. Uh, it was fun for a couple of reasons. One, Colin is great at playing the deck. Mm -hmm. He's played it for a while. He didn't even want to play it that day, but he had nothing else to bring with him. So he ended up playing high tide and making the top four with it. Uh, but two, Matthias is a big high tide aficionado. Yeah, uh, he, enjoys he play, loves high he tide. He enjoys playing high tide mirrors for fun. Yeah. Which he is genuinely likes it. Yeah, <laughs> which is completely absurd behavior. And seeing him light up like a Christmas tree when we had High Tide on and being able to explain all the intricacies of what Colin was doing, I was like, you know what, Matthias, I'm just going to let you go ahead. I'll take the back seat for once, <laughs> yeah. and you tell everybody what's going on. That, that, the same thing happened to us, I believe it was in Nashville, where I was doing a show with uh, Matthias, and there was a High Tide player, and I'm like, go ahead. He literally just took care of everything. Yeah. I just sat back, relaxed. I know all the interactions. I know how He knew how much mana Colin had floating. And everything, it was insane. Oh wow! So does, let's see, does Dustin, did Dustin make a mistake here? Oh, he has a source of plowshare. He so he might just plow the Kozali Prime Mage. Because I was gonna say, I, I oh the green mana just leave oh. a green mana up. Be, oh, he can actually cast a source of plowshare because of Thalia. Thalia. Unless he kills the Thalia, but Thalia has a sword on it. So Dustin might have made a slight error here because he needs a green mana, I believe, to activate Death Ray Shaman oh to remove a creature. Deathrite Shaman, uh, multiple abilities. Well, he, can just, he can just go. Right, he can just go activate Deathrite Shaman, remove the land from the graveyard. But he doesn't have. How is he going to remove it though? 
he needs a he needs he needs a green mana to he no, needs a tap. So I'm saying activate Deathrite Shaman and use the oh, tundra to, to source the in order to source it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So he can use that, but that seems pretty inefficient because you're basically throwing away um, oh, a there, sword. There, there's some other runes in play. Yes. Well, oh, but, but mother. Okay, so Jute can kill Mother of Runes. Jute has to kill. Yeah, it's a lot of work when he can <laughs> just tap the green. Yeah. <laughs> so he could technically do this, but let's see if he makes a mistake. Because, yeah, theoretically, he could remove one counter to kill Mother of Ruins and then activate Death or Shaman to remove a mana, to, to remove a land to get him another mana so he can actually cast the Source of Plath for a Thuthalia dealing with the Quasali Pride Mage. Whereas. Realistically, he could have just removed two counters to kill the Pride Mage and then activate Death or Shaman to remove from the graveyard. All right, so he's, I think he's figured it out now. So he's going to go, all right, remove a GTA counter, target your Mother of Runes. Mother of Runes is going to activate. It's going to target something. It's going to try to target Thalia, I think, even though it can't do that because of, because of the sword. Yeah, I think, I, I think we, they can't actually target yeah. it, so. Protection from white. Yeah, it's already got protection from white, so it can't target that. So either way, though, it looks like Dustin's going to actually um, just source the flash of the Kusali Pride Mage, and it shouldn't really matter much. So now you see, kind of the players just kind of moving back and forth. Now we're going to remove. Yeah, I think they're going to they're going to rewind because targeting Thalia is not legal. Yeah. Because of the sword, so he's targeting something else. He's, All right, I'm going to target the Pride Mage. I think Dustin's going to say, in response to that, I'm going to remove a land. And I'm going to swords this. Now it's going to cost one more because the thigh is in play. So he's going to have to tap the tundra to do that. All right. So eventually they'll. We'll probably we're going to get. We're going to get this game straight. <laughs> we're going to get this game straight. Okay. Th these things are going to. We're not on our watch. Will All these right, players do anything go. illegal? <laughs> so uh, Dustin is able to deal with the Quasali Pride Mage now. Um, it is gone for good because of the exile ability of Source Splasher. And now Thomas is basically in top deck mode. He needs a Green Sun Zenith. Or a Kozali Pride Mage, one of the one of the two left in his deck, I believe. Yep. We're the eyes in the sky. The eyes in the are. sky. We're like the Vegas casino security. <laughs> so Thomas in a tough spot here. He can get back that Mother of Ruins if he if he hits with the Thalia. But again, Mother of Ruins. There's a counter on the Jitte. It's not probably not going to stick around very long. He's reaching for mana already. Three mana. What do we have here? Knight of Reliquary. That's not so good right now. If that's what it is, it's not so good. It's a Jite. Wow, Jite. So that changes things a little bit. I think that matters a lot, actually. Because, like, we're in a racing situation, and Herzog can gain a lot of life with sword plus Jite counters and kill stuff. I don't know how important it is to kill, you know, like the Stoneforge Mystics and the Dried Arbor and the Deathrite Shaman, but we are certainly in a racing situation. This is going to be fun. Yeah, he can actually get back the mother and cast it this turn off the death red uh -huh. so just to get something into play. Obviously, Dustin can still use a counter, but that, that means that that counter isn't pumping the true name nemesis. Yeah. So two counters placed on the GTA. Target this. Gain a little bit of life. It doesn't look like there might be any lands left in the graveyard, though. I don't think so, no. This game's about to get real complicated. These life totals are going to change quite a bit. Yeah, I wonder if... The best play here, yeah, you probably have to keep the Jitte counters on it just in case the Thalia, they try to hit, Dustin tries to kill the Thalia. With, you're going to get three counters on your Jitte. Yeah, yeah so sure, I think you have sure. To, you're, gonna, you're just going to have to try to kill. It's going to be hard, though. Well, he's going to go removing. He said, I want to kill the Dryad Arbor. Okay, so that should be still fine. At least you have one counter, so you can now still protect your Thalia from the Umazel Jitte. You see, Penn, the one thing we do know is that he has a batter skull in his hand still. And that gets the same trap from much earlier in the game. Yeah, I think Dustin's still probably going to win this game. Um, but things got a little hairier now because of that top deck shit they from Herzog. Let's see what Dustin wants to do. I imagine the first thing he wants to do is attack with two nemesis. Oh, no, he's going to hold it back to block. So he is afraid of the race here. Wow. Pumping the brakes. This is where he draws a sword of fire dice, by the way. So wow, this is a very, very interesting situation here. That's a spell. Um, because Thomas has a scrubland in play and a bayou, so he has access to black, so he can actually start draining Dustin. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Dustin can't really respond because he doesn't have black mana. Wasteland gonna come down now. Probably take down this white source. We'll see if he wants to take out the white or the green. Putting a land in the graveyard is a is a real thing right now too. 
just because of the death rights that are in play. And yeah, good activate Stoneforge Mystic here. Float the mana. Okay, so germ token's gonna come in. That batter skull comes into play. That's gonna help him put a little more pressure on. Thomas basically can't really attack right here. Here right, comes that mother, mother ruins. ruins. What's this going to be? Wow, another, another Mother Ruin. So now Dustin's in a tough spot because he can't really just hold back a blocker anymore. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he has one counter left on his Jete, so that can kill uh, one of the Mother Ruins. He's got, Thomas has a giant pro-black first striker <laughs> to block the germ token. So um, if, I, if you're Dustin, I think you have to attack with True Name Amethyst here to kill those Mother Ruins. You can't just, you can't just hold them back to block anymore. Especially if, especially if Thomas starts activating his Death Rush Shaman and he drops you to seven. Wasteland's a land for Pen. So this is where things get really hairy, because this is this is a lot of creature combat and creature math now at this yeah. point. And you know, how familiar are either of these players with this situation? You think things would probably favor the Maverick player because this is kind of the game that they want to get into. This yeah. kind of hairy, weird, you know, game that they're in right now. I, I if you're if you're Thomas, given how this game started, Dustin went turn one death right, turn two true name. This is, if you're Thomas, you gotta be ecstatic that you've gotten to this point in the game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you've actually has, have a chance to win. Now True Name's going to come in again, it looks like. Yeah, True Name has to come in now because he has to deal with the Mother Ruins. I mean, he can't hold back a blocker. I actually thought he should have attacked last turn. Um, so, yeah, True Name is going to come in here. It's going to attack for three, dropping Thomas to eight. And he will get two more counters on that Jete. And you think he should just use that to kill the he, Mothers? He has to. He can't afford to let them become active. Okay. Let's both bite the dust. So Thomas will get a hit in, uh, and that will be a, a hit for potentially uh, one, two, three, four, five, six damage. And he can drain here, dropping him to seven. Well, he's going to go drain for sure because there's nothing that Death Rite Chama can do about it. Yeah. Th because there's only the tropical. So he removes the source of posture. His pen goes down to seven. So I think this could be lethal here because, again, the germ token is black. And so is Deathrite Shaman, and there's and Stoneforge Mystic's right, Wife, so there's really no creatures that can block here. If he if he has to gain two life with the Jete in order to go up to nine. So virtual nine right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I think if Thomas pumps here, Dustin can go down to one, even because the Deathrite Shaman can drain again. Mm -hmm. But he can't finish him. So if he can't finish him, there's no reason to pump, right? No, I think you still pump because you're going to get two more counters anyway. I think you, I think you got to put pressure on him, because you don't know if you you'll be able to get attack you'll be able to get an attack in again because the true name nemesis can start to block mm -hmm. and death Rite shaman will just finish him off that way because you have a green sun zenith in your graveyard and there's a force of will in his so you get two more activations at least. Okay. Oh, so it looks like he didn't pump though. Much more conservative. Wow. So very conservative here. Mother um, runs the tar. Whatever sword targets Death Rite Shaman is going to remove it, and I this allows Pen to actually go up in life. I think you have to respond by removing it because it's effectively the same thing, right? You either, you, if you're going to remove it, if you're going to drain him for two, or you'd rather him it. not gain two yeah, life. Yeah, sure, you know? sure. But instead, it looks like it looks like Thomas decided to let it resolve. So Pen goes up to five. Looks like Herzog has a spell to play. It is another Death Rite Shaman. Okay. Now, does he have to move a sword over? Is a question I think is really interesting. I, I don't think he can because if he does that, then the Thalia can die to a mother, the, the, another attack from Trune Nemesis. My only concern with that is because now Batter Skull is, has the ability to attack to gain four oh, life. Oh, that's true, yeah. So maybe you needed to get something protection from Black. I mean, the alternative play is, you know, Batter Skull comes in and you remove three GT counters from it to, give it, to make it a 1-1. Mm -hmm. And then you maybe, and then you can double block with death right shamans to be able to beat that in combat, and then he only gains a life. But then the GTA that Penn has moves up to three counters. You can take care of the Thalia, and you're, you know, the yeah. game gets a little bit complicated. Then I think that was uh, definitely a mistake on Thomas Bar. He probably has to move over the sword to the th to the death right that he just cast, and then activates the other death right at the end of Dustin's turn. Although I still think he should have just pumped. It's it would have been a lot easier for him um, if he just got Dustin down to the one this turn. So in comes, oh, now this is interesting. It looks like just a batter skull. No true name. Yeah, so if, if that's the case, then I, I pr yeah, I think you're right. I think your play is probably right. You, you, you have him only gained one life. Yeah, do you just go, do you just go GTA triple remove, make your guy into a one, one, block with both my death right shamans? Because if you block with just one, Penn can remove 
his GT counter on the death right shaman that you block with to make it no one, and you lose that combat, and you lose your death right yeah, shaman. You, you know what? I think if you're I think if you're Thomas, you're okay with it. You're just gonna let it. You're just gonna take four, and you're just gonna try to win with death right shaman, okay. and possibly try to get get in one more attack with the Thalia somehow. Okay. Um, again, you can draw a Sword of Fire and Ice. You can draw a Krozali Pride Mage. Um, actually, Krozali Pride Mage, I guess, won't matter. It's really Sword of Fire. It's a Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, I guess, you know, the, the question here is, you know, how much is him gaining for life matter? Eh, you know. It, it definitely matters, but, I mean, yeah, Dustin's at eight. Um, I just don't think you want to lose your death, right, Shamans? It looks like Penn might be going for Thali or, for, excuse me, for Geist. Yeah, why not? Yeah. That 4-4 four, four flyer that Geist creates, we haven't seen Geist's same trap for a while here in coverage, but that 4-4 four, four flyer it creates can really mess up the, uh, the combat math now. All right, Herzog, it's time to activate those death rate shamans, that's for sure. So the first one is going to go active. It's going to probably remove an instant or sorcery here from the graveyard. We'll see if he wants to gain life or drain life. It's going to remove the force world. Yeah, and I kind of wish he just removed his mother ruins in response to the, the turn before, because it's the same thing. Dustin would have stayed at six. He wouldn't have gained two life, but you would have been at two higher life. Sure. Which can be very relevant here, given the fact that Geist is two hits in the air for eight, potentially. This is three mana. What is this? Is this sword? Maybe he could... Thalia in play. It's probably, oh, it's a, a knight or well, okay. So that could be relevant. Does he have a Sejuri step or something to search out? Any for? spice, any spice. Four Wastelands, a Karakas, a Cradle, a Dried Arbor, Horizon Canopy is already used. No real spice down here. Uh, Karakas can bounce to Jete. No, Legendary oh, Creature. That's right. No. <laughs> That'd be too good. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's nothing that great that's going to break open the game. He can get a Horizon Canopy, I guess. Unless he already used it. Yeah, he used the only one that he's got. Yeah. So nothing too spicy there. Death by Shaman's going to remove a land from the graveyard just so that knight gets a little bit smaller. The mana that's generated goes unused. Pen going to untap and take a draw here and see if he can work his way through the rest of this combat and the rest of this game. Game has already gotten complicated enough. So let's see here. If you're Thomas, I don't think... If, if Dustin doesn't do anything this turn... I don't think you can afford to do anything either. I think you want to just untap, because if you activate your Deathrite Shaman, then Dustin is just going to respond by removing a creature and gaining two life. I don't think you, you can't let him gain two life. Sure. You have to, you have to use your Deathrite in response. So you have, you have Deathrite Shaman advantage right now. Okay. You don't want to give it up. Dustin just has a Daze and a Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Because of Thalia, he can't cast that Jace. Daze might be relevant, but I'll, so it looks like Thomas Move is going to activate. See what he targets. He's going to go with, OK, he's going to go with swords. So is, go with is, is Dustin going to be, is Dustin going to use his Deathrite Shaman now? No, he nope. doesn't. So Thomas gets a little fortunate there because Dustin could have responded when De he didn't have an abil the, ab the ability to actually activate Deathrite. The second Deathrite, rather. Seven to four are the life totals. Who can punch through for the last points of damage? You've got this cluttered board state on Penn's side. He's got a he's got a batter skull with the germ on it. He's got two stone forge mystics, but he's already got both of the equipment out of his deck, so those are just squires right now. A guy's a sight a guy's a saint draft, excuse me, a true nemesis with a GT on it with one charge counter, and a Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite can only actually be activated for the land ability or the green ability to remove a creature. Can't activate the black ability. Herzog side, he's got another reliquary with maybe a land or two in the graveyard. Now Herzog's going to respond by moving a creature in right. response to the Deathrite Shaman activation, a play that you were advocating. You also got the Thalia out there that's equipped with a swords, Sword of Light and Shadow, and it was out Shite with three counters, and then two Deathrite Shamans for Herzog. So uh, let's see. Another Mana Source would be useful here. He can actually cast, or actually, no, he doesn't have enough because if Deathrite tries to remove a land for mana, Thomas can just respond mm -hmm. by removing it. So, yeah. Jace doesn't look like he'll be able to come into play just yet, but it doesn't look like Dustin sees it. That's Jace, man. You get excited. <laughs> so I let's understand. see what happens here. He's going he's gonna to go down to three, which is going to be very relevant. Interesting thing, too, here is that Knight of the Reliquary finally gets to do stuff. It's just chilling out like it's not even there. <laughs> now the Reliquary does a lot. Four. You got, to, right. pay, you got to pay one more. Now, oh, now he sees it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. He's like, ah, I want to, no, I can't. Oh, this is so awkward. <laughs> I can't catch Jace. 
<laughs> what are we going to do that for, man? Nothing? Nothing. I wasn't going to do anything. What are you talking about? You don't know what's going on. I'm just going to play a war mammoth. So it looks like he's going to try to activate first, and let's see what Thomas does. Now, if you're Thomas, you have to smell you what's coming. Yeah, you yeah, have you to activate that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. You do not get to touch this. Okay, so I think Thomas thought about it, but I think because Dustin tapped four mana, I think yeah, the jig is you have to up. know. Unless that's like the super, yeah, super, the bluff super or something. Bluff. No, no, no. You that, don't get this land. That would be a sweet bluff to kind of just stop Thomas from activating his death, right? Mm -hmm. But again, there's no spells anyway, I yeah. don't think, left. No, there's no spells. There's just lands over there for Pen. There might uh, be a green sun zine. I think there might oh, still be a okay, green Yeah, there's a GSC yeah. over there for Herzog. So Dustin's effectively at five because there still is a Jete counter that he has. What are we doing here? It looks like we're going to move a Jete over. To who? To Stoneforge? Oh, that's weird. Because, it, again, the Valia has pro white oh, and, yeah, for strike, and for so strike. Nothing's going to happen here. It's going to eat it up. This is a safe, this is a safe block. Yeah. I, no, yeah. Sorry. You just, you're not getting counters. Mm -mm. And this is what I was talking about when, like, if you've never been in situations like this before, like all of this crazy creature combat and stuff, yeah. where all of the text matters right now. Yeah, everything matters. Thalia's been quite, quite obnoxious this game. Yeah, yeah. All the text that's happening on all these cards matters. First strike, ah, oh, crap, I don't get GT counters. No, you don't. You know, the protection from the swords, all of this stuff matters. Yeah, there are a number of reasons why your play will not work. Mm -hmm. Now the Willikers is going to go sacrifice the forest. You saw Herzog float a green mana. See what Lanny wants to search out here again. No real spice. He can go wasteland hunting right now to build up a graveyard, go after the bayou to make it so that the Deathrite Shaman for Pen is a lot worse. Yeah, uh, but it looks like he didn't go after the trap. It looks like he went after... Oh, he so went after the, the bayou. Yeah, yeah, he went after the bayou. So that's a good play there. And the other thing is it keeps him off Jace even further. Yep. So. Um, pretty big play. Well, what there. we think is a Jace. What we think is a Jace. We don't know. We, don't know. we, we have no idea. Again, it could be a War Mammoth. Could have been Supreme Bird. Yeah. No <laughs> Herzog is going to untap. He's going to take a draw here. Can he deal the last three? Well, he's reaching for mana. It looks like he drew something of relevance. Yeah, it's just um, there's no spells in the graveyard other than that one green sun zine. It's, uh, it's just. Uh, it looks like there's a, there's a Dryad Arbor in Dustin's graveyard, so he's got to be wary of that too, to make sure that the. The creature's ability of Deathrite Shaman doesn't. You don't want Dustin to gain life here. Ooh, it looks like there's a green sun scene if he drew. Interesting. Let's see what the Xenoth targets could be here in just a moment. A source of plowshares, too. Herzog is going to start by adding mana, and then I think it looks like he wants to activate Knight. And so he's gonna add he's gonna add mana from the savannah and then activate the knight. Maybe. Quite possibly. He's considering it. He's going to add mana. Hey, okay, he's going to sacrifice. All right. He, has, he does have a Gaius Cradle to go for, so he's plenty of mana. He wants it. Get the Cradle. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Not messing around here. Cradle's going to be able to fight four mana. Green, he can green sun Zenith for the world here, right? Yeah, he can. He can get this. He can go get Pride Mage, which was like the best card anyway, I think. He's doing anything for a bunch. We'll see what he wants to search for. I think Penn's trying to figure out if he should let this resolve because Penn has the days in his hand, but he can't cast days because of Thalia. Oh, you know what? If he, he he floated a white, right? Yeah. So if he floated a white, this could be a very good play here. He could actually, so he has like four mana. I think he has one green and one white floating. So if he actually activates the Pride Mage targeting the Jete, and then Dustin responds by gaining two life, Thomas can respond by casting Source to Plowshare targeting one of his own creatures and then activating both Deathrite Champions. It depends on how much many he has left in his hand. Because yeah. he has the Green Sun Zenith in, in, in his graveyard, along, he has that Sword to Plowshare in his hand. So with Dustin at three, depending on how much mana he has floating and what color it is, he could actually make a pretty interesting play here. That'd be a sick play. He has, he has, he has those two lands, that, those two, the two lands being linked to Death, Deathrite Champions can actually activate enough to do four damage if he has two spells in his graveyard. Yeah. But it's all about the timing, because mm -hmm. you can't let him gain two life with the Jete. He's going to start ticking down. He says, I want to take care of your death right, Shaman. Get that thing out of here. All right. That problem is solved. Yeah, so it, I don't think he had enough mana left. He had, he had the Gaius Cradle generated four mana, 
and they had a white floating, and he needed to use uh, four in order to get the Kozali fragment. So I don't think he had enough for yeah, that Yeah, I don't play. think so either. All right, so now Pride Mage with the mana floating says, I want to take down the Jute. Yeah, so maybe he does have two, yeah, maybe he does have two spells in his graveyard. I know the one Green Sun Zenith was countered, so, and the one he just cast was shuffled back to his library. Yep. So there are definitely two, there are, there is one spell in the graveyard. There's a Zenith in the graveyard, and he's got the swords in his hand. But he doesn't have the mana to do the, the play that you talked about, yeah. to do all of those things. But I, either way, though, still pretty good shape. He's still got the Death Rite Shaman. He'll be able to activate once, and then he still has the Swords to Plowshare in his hand. Next turn, he can just cast it on one of his creatures and then get that other spell in his graveyard. Well, there's Noble Hierarch. That doesn't matter too much. True Name can't really do many, anything in this position besides play defense. Batter Skull can't attack because of Thalia having protection from black. Herzog is going to go activating this death right, Shaman. Now it's going to remove something. I believe it's going to be the Green Sun, which it is. Pen goes down to three. Yeah, and the, the awkward thing is because Thomas used the Pride Mage, he's still going to be off on spells. Like, ideally, Thomas should have used his Pride Mage when he was ready to cast the Swords to Plowshare on his turn. So that way, he's able to actually do enough damage in response to him gaining life. Sure. Because now Dustin's at three. Even though he could get a Swords to Plowshare into his graveyard, Dustin will remain at one, and he doesn't have any other way to break through right now. Her's not going to take a draw here. He's got a bunch of mana from the Cradle. He can tap for four green. See what this is. That's Noble Hierarch. There's a green mana floating. Three of them, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you signed up for Commander Pond number four, you hear this is ready for you. That one doesn't matter too much. Yeah, so Thomas really not much he can do right here. He's got that swords in his hand. Again, he can try he can cast on one of his own creatures to get another spell in the graveyard. But again, Tom Dustin will just be a one life. Yeah, it's done for his mission control here. So we're basically playing a waiting game. Dustin's not going to be able to do anything either. He's not really able to break through. Yeah, he can't get through at all. He has one piece of equipment left in his deck, I believe. Another sword. So he can find that now. The only good thing that he can do is, I guess if he draws the fifth land, you see him search up the sword here, he can He can move the batter scroll over the true name. Oh, yeah. And then that's huge, because Batter Skull plus the, uh, the um, Exalted Trigger from Noble Hierarch, you're talking about uh, eight points of life gain. Yeah. So if he can get, just get another source of mana, um, he's in really good yeah, shape. If you're Herzog, you probably have to kill that, that Noble Hierarch with the Jute counter, because of that being a, a line of play. Yeah, you have to kind of see that. Here's more mana being added. Let's see what Tom can do now. Ah, he's tapping a little more. So five, six. Four left. That's sort of fire. Oh, that's that, it. That's, that's sort it. of fire nice. That that is pro blue there. So, so he has um, he had six mana floating. Now he has four mana floating. So he can cast this and play around days, which we know is in Dustin's hand. Cast. So this. He has no mana left in his pool, mm -hmm. and now he has plenty of mana to equip. So that should be it here. His creature will have pro black, pro white, pro ah, blue, beat him. red. He beat him. <laughs> Give me turn two true name, turn oh my god. Turn true turn two true name, turn three, search for Jete. Thomas Herzog and his Maverick that oh were able to win. God! Wins game number one through that cluttered affair. A marathon game. Herzog up one with Maverick over Dustin Ben playing Bant Midrange. Um, let's go to the sideboard. Let's start with Dustin. You've got that in front of you. Well, there's two minutes left in the round, so hopefully we'll no, get to Oh, they've to got an extension. Too. They've uh, got an extension. We've got 14 minutes. So, in, in, in Dustin's sideboard, he's got two copies of Ethics Sworn Canada, four Meddling Mage, two Rest in Peace, two Graft Digger's Cage, three Crows and Grip, and two Humility. Honestly, he doesn't really have that much for this matchup. Uh, you would expect him to be pretty good game one. He does, the three Crows and Grip obviously are going to be very important. Um, being able to deal with equipment is uh, is one of the main things that Dustin Deck lacks game one. So I'd say the Crows and Grips definitely come in. Um, beyond that, though, Metal Image maybe, but I just don't see Metal Image being very effective in this particular matchup. It's really probably Crows and Grip and nothing else. He's got Days. Days can be okay, but like we saw, it wasn't very good for him. It kind of stuck in his hand towards the end of the game there. So um, everything else, you can't board out any of your creatures, basically. Um, Force of Will can be very important. 
and obviously Sword to Plasher. It's a question of do you like Jace the Mind Sculptor or Daze in this particular matchup? I personally uh, like Jace a lot. Don't think I want to board that card out. So I think I board out some of my Dazes. Four thoughts. He's a scavenger. He's a Kasali Pride Mage. Choke. Two Oblivion Ring. Two Zealous Persecution. Nether Sworn Canist. A Gaddick Teague and two copies of Path to Exile. Uh, as far as options are concerned, well, Pride Mage was great, so I imagine another one of those is going to come in. Kind of like uh, Scavenger Goose in these green mirrors. Uh, I don't love Choke, even though it's kind of an interesting one of against this. like kind of blue deck, but not really a blue deck. Oblivion Ring is great against a lot of uh, pen stuff since he's an equipment deck. Uh, you got to like Zealous Persecution against the true name Noble yeah. Hierarch deck, so that one's pretty obvious. Um, and then that path doesn't really seem all that good. I mean, the best creatures in Penn's deck are Geist and True Name, so... Yeah, because if you path one of the one-drop accelerants, he's getting to his three-drop sooner anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah the path doesn't make a lot of sense. But um, definitely like the Thought Seizes, and even the Choke um, could be kind of uh, problematic for, for this deck. So the play that you mentioned with the... Um you know, to be able to cast all those spells in the same turn, just swords and drain them out with yeah. death right. And as many things as we were talking about, potential lines of play, um, I guess Tenacious Tyler J on Twitter mentioned that in order to do that, he was kind of bottlenecked by his own Thalia. Yeah. He could remove Jute counters, I believe, to kill his Thalia, because he had three counters on it, he had three toughness. And the fact that he was bottlenecked on the mana, if he kills his own Thalia, he's able to make that play. Oh, that's right, yeah. Get the job done. He can, he can make that play that turn. Yeah. yeah. He kills his own Thalia, swords doesn't cost two, it only costs one. He doesn't necessarily manage to do everything. Uh, I wouldn't have seen it either. I mean, that, that's a really, that's a pretty tough line to make and see through all that clutter there. So props to you for seeing that on Twitter. Jeez. Got to start things off with a Dryad Arbor. Both players keeping their opening hands. So first, I guess the Swords of Plowshares to fire off. He's just going to play a Deathrite Shaman instead before passing the turn back over to Penn, who will take a draw. You see the Tundra in his hand. He's got another one. Yeah, interesting. Dustin, Dustin's deck has a uh, Dryad Arbor, but doesn't have Green Sun Zenith in his deck. A lot of a lot of these types of band decks, you see them, they play uh, Green Sun Zenith as a way to search out that Dryad Arbor. It's kind of like a pseudo one-drop accelerant. Mm -hmm. There's Arbor. not many, there's no really no green creatures in his deck to find, so. Let's see what Penn wants to do here. It looks like he wants to cast a one-mana green spell. Not sure, though. Yes, no, maybe so. How about a Stone Forge? That one's pretty good. That's going to resolve. Go with Search It. We'll see what equipment Dustin wants this go around. He's going to go with Jite. Stoneforge Mystic is one heck of a magic card. As Herzog will untap and take a draw here. Yeah, you have arguably one of the, the best one drops and one of the best two drops ever made in magic on the board right here. <laughs> yeah. This is Legacy. <laughs> this is, you, you can't play weak cards in Legacy. That's you got to play only the best of the That's why I don't play Goblins anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it stopped. I think Goblin Lackey, I'd say, was one of the better cards they yeah, made. Yeah, 98. Yeah, in a while. Yeah, it has, it's been a while, but... It's, you shouldn't take such pleasure of like beating a Stoneforge Mystic, because like if I would if I was playing Goblins and I would manage to get by like Stoneforge Mystic and Batter Skull, I'd be like, yes, yes, I beat it. It's like, why am I so happy? Yeah. I shouldn't be thrilled that I had to overcome the odds to beat that card. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so happy I'm a big dummy and played a deck that can't be one of the best cards <laughs> yeah. in the legacy. Oh, Stoneforge Mystic, ah, you win. That's that's <laughs> cool. You drew that. Here is a Deathrite Shaman. Coming to play off the Deathrite Shaman activation, you also see the Sylvan Library there for Herzog as well. Placing it center of his board so he makes sure he doesn't forget the complicated enchantment. Pen gonna tap three mana here. See if he has true name again, maybe a Geist. It is a true name nemesis. And this is what his deck is all about, really. Yeah. Stoneforge, true name. That's, you know, true name's so powerful that it's kind of reasonable that you kind of have decks that are just built around getting a bunch of pants on it and attacking with it. Yeah, we saw Ty Thomason put this on the map in Dallas at the back end of last year when True Name came out, just playing a blue-white deck. That, that, was, that was the one-two punch. Stoneforge for equipment, play a True Name, kill you that way. Turtonwald won a Grand Prix with it. It's been here ever since. Let's see what Herzog can do here as he takes a look at the top couple of cards here with the Silver Library, the mini brainstorm, as it were. Ooh, it looks like he has a Gaia's Cradle, so he's going to be able to jump up his mana a little bit here. Deathrite Shaman, Gaia's Cradle. No card, no lands in the graveyard currently. And it looks like we might see a Green Sun Zenith. Yeah, so Green Sun Zenith for two, I believe. Might see a Quasali Pride Mage. Obviously, that card um, was very important in game one. Could see a Stoneforge Mystic, too. But no, look, we're going to see who's all Pride Mage. Make sure that Jete does not get equipped to that true name nemesis. 
So let's see what Dustin decides to do on his turn. It looks like he does have a Jace and uh, that Umazawa Jete. He also drew a Wasteland for the turn, so can put some pressure on Thomas' man and deal with that Gaius Cradle, which can get uh, out of control very quickly. Kind of, He might want to just cast the, J the Jace here and try to get a little advantage, card, out, card advantage off of it. Um, just playing the Jete and equipping seems kind of weak, given that there's a Pride Mage in play. So you're telling me he's going to go Stoneforge, true name Jace, huh? <laughs> Those are three solid cards. Two of these cards were standard legal together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Jace is going to come into play here. See how he wants to use it. Nice card there, Jace. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually when I was on my hiatus for Magic when Callblade was a thing. And knowing me, I would not have played Callblade. I'm going to play Vampires. Yeah. I'll show everybody. Yeah, I'll play Vampires. Yeah. That's a reasonable choice. Yeah. Oh, I lose to a Mortar Pond. All right. <laughs> I can't beat what you're doing. This is very frustrating. Oh, you have a, you have a creature that basically searches three other creatures? <laughs> yeah. And then you're going to put them back on two of them on top of your library and just search them out again? I can overcome this. I will play a Bloodgast. <laughs> In comes True Name, it looks like. Is True Name yeah. going to come in here or is it going to play defense? Seems like it might want to play defense to protect that Jace. Yeah, you don't want to lose the, you lose your Jace. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. that's what it's going to do. It's just going to hang out for a little bit here. Herzog going to untap, going to do a little Sylvan Library action here. Take a look at the top three. Can pay four life to draw a card during the Sylvan Library. or just put two back. And it, it looked like he had a Sword of Fire and Ice on top of his deck, which would be pretty huge because it would basically force Dustin to lose his Stoneforge Mystic or lose his Jace, like he'll have the option. I don't think he cares about a Stoneforge Mystic, given that he searched out his Jete. Yeah. But still, at least Thomas will be able to get a uh, Sword of Fire Ice into play. Plus, he has the Pride Mage to deal with the Jete. So let's see if he does have that play. Cradle's going to provide three mana right now. See if he wants to do that or not. A little unsure of himself. Figure out, trying to figure out what the best line is to get through this incredibly powerful board here from Penn of True Name, Stoneforge, and Jace is going to start by sacrificing that Verdant Catacombs and going down to 19. Oh, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like he did have a sword on his deck, but I think he might have shuffled it away with the Green Sun last turn. So he's going to search out a Dried Arbor. That will net him another mana because it is a creature. So Gaius Cradle now can tap for four mana. You could see another Green Sun Zenith here. Oh, no, it is that sword. Yep. So he has one mana floating. Let's see what he decides to equip here. He's going to equip the uh, Deathrite Shaman. So if it attacks with the Exalted Trigger, it can attack for four, which will kill the Jace. So let's see what he decides to attack here. Because of the Pearl Blue, um, True Name Nemesis cannot block it, which is one of the reasons people love uh, Sword of Fire. Yeah, that's a big reason that people have gone to this card. And to be fair, people also using, using True Name Nemesis have gone to it too, just because it allows you to win the game so quickly. Yeah. So will Penn block? I mean, it seems like he doesn't want to block with his Stoneforge, but he may have to. And yeah, this doesn't surprise me too much that he would make this block. Yeah, and I think Thomas is still okay with this because, again, he does have a way to deal with Jitte, and now he's got that powerful sword in play. The question is, can um, Dustin uh, draw a Croson grip? I mean, Thomas is basically... Um, if, if, Thomas, if Dustin can't deal with the Sword of Fire and Ice, Thomas is in pretty good shape. Another Wasteland comes to play here for Penn. He's got to really consider, I think, taking out one of those Cradles. Or, excuse me, taking out the Cradle with one of those Wastelands. Yeah, the Cradle was pretty huge for Thomas last turn. He gave him enough mana to do everything he wants to. Yeah. He still has mana up in order to uh, activate the Quasali Pride Mage if he has to. A brainstorm for Penn. He's going to draw three. up to put two back here in just a moment. Don't love the order of operations there by playing the Wasteland first. If you were to run into a fetch line, you could actually shuffle away some cards with the Jace, maybe look at some new ones. He played his land immediately. It, it didn't look like he ran into a fetch land, but got to be a little bit careful with that to make sure you can maximize your Jace appropriately, especially in a situation like this where you're, you're in a pretty tough spot as here comes the Noble Hierarch. Yeah, your hand's pretty weak right now. Um, you don't have that much to interact with the sword other than, like, chump blockers. So I agree with you. You kind of want to make sure that you maximize your Jace every turn because it's, it's pretty much your most powerful way to get out of this. True is going to come across for four here. Three normal damage plus one exalted from that noble hierarch. See if Penn wants to use this wasteland. It looks like he's going to go reaching now. 
and he will take down the Cradle. That'll slow down Herzog's development quite a bit. Still a lot of mana out there for Thomas, though. He's got the three lands and then two death rights. He's going to activate one death right on the end step, remove that Stoneforge Mystic to gain a little bit of life. And again, we might see Noble Hierarch on jumping duty now. Yeah, pretty much. Given the fact that he didn't have a sack land, he knows what two cards are on top of his library. He needs to make sure that he digs a card deeper. He can't get uh, Jace locked right here. And the problem is that uh, Thomas just doesn't have any way to bake through right now. Um, but again, Sword is still going to be pretty good for him. Dustin's going to need a, a multiple chump blockers here. Yeah, it looks like Death Rite's coming over. Yep, Death Rite's going to come over, attacking Jace again, it looks like. And yep, Noble Hierarch will jump right in front of it without hesitation. Dustin stays at 20. Thomas is at 17. But again, he's facing down two True Name Nemesis, so this could be an awkward situation where as long as he just keeps getting blockers into play, these True Name might just be able to yeah, win. And he's got another blocker out there already in Dryad Arbor. Yeah. So that, that's the situation we could see. Now, neither Relic Warrior is going to gun that up a little bit because that can search for a Wasteland and get that out of the way. Yeah. But again, the race is certainly on. And there's also, you know, a Jace that's going to be brainstorming and stuff. So this is a, this is a different game, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, and, and obviously, I, I know that Thomas has uh, has to concern himself with the race, but I'm surprised he's not digging a little bit more with that Sylvan Library, given the fact that he can gain two life with those Death Threat Champions to sure. kind of recoup some of that life. Because obviously, Sylvan Library lets you look at the top three cards of your library, but it also lets you pay four life to get one of those cards into your hand. It cleared out of the way. Yeah, so you can kind of dig a little deeper. He has to be concerned here that this plan won't work if Dustin has multiple chump blockers. And with active Jace, I mean, that's certainly realistic. Source of Plowshare kind of messes it up, too. Because yeah. sword, obviously the sword grants pro blue and pro red, does not grant pro white, however. Yeah, so Thomas really needs, oh wow, so yep, he's going to take out the Quasali Prime Image, and here we can see the Jete come mm -hmm. down and start getting equipped. There's a Wasteland. Now it looks like it is Jete time. There's that. Follow up with an equip, and the red zone we go with both of them, not messing around anymore. In yeah. for six, Herzog's going to go down to 13. Two charge counters coming on the GTA. Yeah, and this this could be worse for Thomas. Because he has that sword, I think he's still in, in, in OK shape in order to top deck out of this. Um, but yeah, he's obviously in, in a really tough spot right here. He's going to be at least be able to get one hit off the sword, draw a card, deal some damage. Knight of the Royal Quarry could potentially take out the Jace. Um, if, if I was Dustin, I'm not sure I attack with both of them. I think it was aggressive. One. It was a very aggressive play. Let's not forget one thing, though. You see the clock in the middle. We're under a minute 30. Okay. And Herzog is up a game. You might have to get a little more aggressive now. Yeah. That's a, that's a real thing to be worried about. So good draw there for Thomas. He drew another green sun zenith. So now he can find the Quasali Pride Mage. Uh, but would you attack first, though, just to see what Dustin decides to do? Maybe. Oh, so he just <laughs> looks like he just drew a Pride Mage. Yeah. That's easy, too. So that's easier. That'll slow down that GTA a little bit. So now you can actually, yeah, neither Relicrate that can take out Chase, and you can actually deal damage to Dustin with your sword and draw a card. Oh, we're going somewhere here. See how these creatures are attacking here in a moment. We'll see what happens when the dust does settle. Man, crazy match between these two guys. Yeah, this is... Given, you know, Dustin went turn two Stoneforge, turn three True Name Nemesis, turn four Jace, and he's still really struggling to win this game. It's yeah. so funny. It's the same thing with the first game. Things look so good for him. Um, but Thomas is able to navigate his way right back into this simply on the power of the equipment. It just kind of shows you that, you know, no matter how good True Name Nemesis is, if you can't interact with equipment, it doesn't really matter. You yeah. know, and that was the main reason, I think, that people um, didn't like playing True Name Nemesis in, like, uh, and basically in like a Bant shell, because you have no way to kind of kill True Name Nemesis or really interact with their equipment, you know? Um, you really need to, like, that's why I kind of, I think people like the bug True Name version, because at least you have Abrupt Decay, yep. you know? And Abrupt Decay is good in so many spots anyway. Yeah. Pride Mage gonna take down the GTA. You see GTA, the counters get removed to take down some creatures. Now there's a Zenith for one. This could potentially get a Mother Ruins. Which would uh, I promise it's not mother. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, death right yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can only get green creatures. Yep. Here's a replacement death right. So 
So this game looks like there are still plenty of spells in the graveyard, or at least a, at least one. There's Source of Plowshare. here, but I, this I'm with you. I don't think this game's gonna actually. I don't think anyone's gonna win this game. I think it might go to time. Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, uh, obviously the time has been called in the match. We'll make sure that that's accurate along with whose turn it is right now. But it has just been a slog out of fair against these two creature decks. Just back and forth we go. And it's like it's funny because it, it seems like the race would favor Penn right now, and depending on how many turns he gets to play, if he's turned one, three, and five, or two and four, you know, he's attacking for five here, but Deathrite can gain some life, and Herzog may be able to keep his head above water. Just barely. We'll see. There's Stoneforge. Stoneforge is gonna complicate things a little more. Might be able to get a batter skull here. Or a sword. Probably gets a sword if he still has it and left in his deck. Yeah, so he's going to be able to play a sword. So, yeah, this makes it very difficult. So, turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. So, Dustin's going to get two more turns. Mm -hmm. uh, Deathrite can actually probably gain four life. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you. This is going to be pretty tough here. We might need to see a top deck Zell's Persecution. Otherwise, this uh, game might be a draw. I forgot that was in his deck. <laughs> Jeez. That would be absurd. There's yeah. a sword. I I do think. Oh no, he used a green sun zenith on his death right. So, um, not sure he has another green sun in his hand. He's gonna be able to look at the top three cards of his library. One, two, three. Yeah. Thalia, a green card, and a land. Yeah, nothing. I think it's a, I think it's a knight. Yeah, I think it's a knight. It's not a zealous. Yeah, and he can't really shuffle his grave, uh, shuffle his library mm -hmm. right now um, to get another card uh, off the death right hit. But even if I don't even think death right is going to hit here, I, death right might just stay untapped and activate to gain life because he's just going to get chump blocked by the stone forge anyway, right? Yeah, I mean the only thing that he could do here, I think, is you know if he's trying to draw just in, in dressed in the zealous persecution, his play could be attack with death. Oh, I guess it would just get blocked yeah. by stone forge. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, because he could never neither the rel query to shuffle. Yeah, with the draw on the stack. I, I just don't think. That, yeah, I think. Dustin pretty much just chump blocks there with yeah. Stoneforge. I can't imagine. Well, we've seen him chump block before, so that's well within you know his behavior to do. Yeah, so let's see here. If Dustin just equips a sword, that's going to be 5, 8, and then 10 damage. So, yeah, I don't think Thomas can actually get out of this one unless that card that was left in his hand from the beginning of the turn is something really good. Yeah, I don't know either. He's going to add some, uh, he's gonna add some mana here, sacrifice. The Savannah. What are we going to go searching for? I mean, Green Sun Zenith would be good because you just need to kill the sword. Because if Dustin just attacks for six, you can gain two life at least and go up to seven. Right now, though, if you gain two, four life, if you use both death right damage, you're going up to nine. But that sword will do two damage to you mm -hmm. after the attack. So. so now, after a little mana gets added, we cast a knight. Does that change things at all? I know. It looks like one of the cards is a Thalia. I don't know what the last card is in hand. Not sure that Knight changes anything. Yeah, so I don't think... Yeah, this should be it then. Maybe this is a situation where Herzog is maybe hoping that he won't kill him. You know, I have an, I have an artifact removal spell in my hand or you know, something like that. Yeah, maybe he's like, oh, well, uh, I want you to be cautious. I'm gonna float a mana yeah, here. This forces like... this forces the action. Gonna gain two. Gonna go up to seven. Will Tom? Yeah. His only hope is that that uh, Dustin only equips one of the the, the the true name and attacks with that one creature. Yeah. If he attacks with both true names, then Thomas is dead. That's what it looks like to me too. Well, we'll see. So yeah, the, it looks like the wasteland is taking out the bayou here. Looks like Wasteland's gonna take out another land. Yeah. And if, yeah, at this point, Dustin knows what's up. It's like, you're tapped out, you're gonna gain two more life. As long as he does math correctly, uh, we should see a swing here for bo with both the true names. Yep, there's your equip. Yep, he and, attack with yeah, both. I think he just attack with both. And I think that that should be a lethal one. A five, yeah, five, three true, true name, plus a three, one, that's eight. And then Sword of Fires uh, will do the last two uh -huh. points of damage. 
Uh, I think Herzog, you can see the way he's holding his card now. I think he realizes that. Yep. And he's got to extend the hand. Penn is able to get it done on turn three of extra turns. And these two players are going to draw here in Indianapolis. Dustin Penn and Thomas Herzog both move on to 4-0 and 1.